all of which hopefully create communities worth living in. After a more than 20 year career in HR leadership, Colin committed to focusing full time on partnering with individuals, managers, executives, teams, and organizations to identify what success looks like and help them move forward to achieving that success at work and in life. He possesses a degree in interpersonal and public communication and a certificate in leadership coaching from Georgetown University and is a professional certified coach with the International Coaching Foundation. He's known for his wicked intuition, insight, and compassionate challenge in helping clients find their way forward in coaching, facilitation, speaking, and learning and development programs. So please join me in a welcome comment. Thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I noticed there is a camera. Is that okay with everyone? Good. It's okay with me. I just like to check. How is everyone this morning? Good. Yeah? I would love to hear a little bit more about good as we move into this experience. Um, I'm thrilled to be here. I, too, have been in transition any number of times in my life, probably three or four that I can think of off the top of my head. Um, and I have a real passion and belief in helping people move forward. And so I'm glad that you're here. You took the step to be here today, and I hope to honor that choice by helping you find something new, something different, re-energize, re-engage with your own personal sense of leadership and who you are. So that's my intention for the day. Um, I'd like to invite each of you to get fully present we spend a lot of time feeling very distracted in our lives. Technology <coughs> distracts us, people just don't live. life distracts us. And so I'm gonna invite everyone to just kind of take a big deep breath and choose to be here. Because your presence is a present in the present to those present, <laughs> including yourself. And when we're present, when we're present as people, when we're present as leaders, we're more engaged, who are able to make conscious choices, we're leading from a place of intention. So we're going to be the gift by being fully present and here. The one thing I love that I don't seem to have to mention is to invite you to take a break from technology. You have all already done that. Give yourselves a round of applause. Well done. Excellent. Um, I can't tell you how many times I have to start with convincing people to put their phones down so that they can actually be here and not here. Um, so I would love to just get everyone's voice in the room to start with, and I'm going to invite you to just share your name, uh, kind of what industry you're, you're in, and then a one-word check-in. And a one-word check-in is just a one word about your current state of being. How are you coming into this morning? What are you experiencing within yourself? So whoever is feeling courageous, you'll get this call. Hello, um, my name is Delphine, I'm from France. Um, so previously in my career, I was working at the French parliament as a civil servant. Uh, and I, at the, in the last few years, I was managing the shop uh, at the French parliament. So um, it was another way of um, work there. Um, and so I'm here uh, since two years. I arrived two years ago, and um, my kids are now at school. And I want to to move forward and try to find something because it's not so easy without any relations um, yeah. and more. So I am just curious today to um, see Great. what we what, what can I hear from you and. Um, so curious. curious. Yeah. Great, good. Hi, I'm Patty, and I'm a 40 plus member. Uh, I'm a lawyer by training, and I work in international development, and I also do feng shui. Thanks. Um, so, and I have not been working for- Lawyer who does feng shui. Who knew that exists? Here it is. Right. Right. <laughs> and I used to have an import business from Bali, because I used to live in Bali. Very cool. So, and I haven't been working for a little while by choice, and now trying to figure out the next steps um, and I have a couple of ideas for a couple of different businesses, and I've been a little stifled, so I'm trying to get things going. And uh, today I feel very open. Open. Beautiful. Good. 
Uh, my name is Jim. Uh, I've been here once before. Um, I'm in communications, the broad word meaning public relations, media relations, crisis communications, outreach. Um, I was director at a uh, utility for 11 years prior to that. I made a successful transition from television news. So, you know, I'm looking for the next chapter. Um, and I guess right now I say the word is frustrating. Frustrating. Good. Nice. My name is Ileana Mendez. And, um, Your industry. Uh, my industry. Well, yeah. well, my industry is in transition, but I'm um, a trained designer. Um, by um, training, and I work in communications and branding, primarily branding. One word about your current state. Of um, open in transition. Open in transition. Mm -hmm. Awesome. We'll just put little hyphens to make that all look yes, good. Right. Good. Nice, nice, nice. <laughs> good morning. My name is Laura Battles. So I'm a former political appointee and congressional staffer, speech writer, legislative liaison. In transition, the state of being is procrastinating. <laughs> <laughs> we well, couldn't procrastinate, right? You couldn't procrastinate too much. You got here. <laughs> so a more global sense of procrastination. Nice. Okay. Welcome. My name is Gina Manley. I'm a 40 plus volunteer. I'm an operations and events guru. I've done events in the political um, nonprofit and uh, political nonprofit and government sectors. And my words are two. I'm an influ influx. Influx. <laughs> or fluxing. Fluxing. <laughs> I'm fluxated. I'm fluxified. Good. All right. My name is Kate Hagman. I'm an editor and social media writer, although I do not overuse exclamation points. <laughs> um, I come to that field from 20 years spent as a political transcriber, meaning I was covering the people that I was working for. Um, and I work for a couple of different organizations, nonprofit mostly, but I'm looking for that next big gig. Um, among other things, I do social media for a very fine little arts nonprofit in the DC area. And uh, I, again, I'm looking, I'm looking to clean up the bad probes that's <laughs> terrorizing our We've our got a lot of work to do. That's what fascinates me is that they need the help, but I'm afraid people are in denial. But anyway, yeah. um, and my state of mind is thoughtful. Thoughtful. Thanks. Uh, my name is Josh. Um, I'm in, uh, I currently work on, I guess we could call it international health, public health advocacy. Um, and um, I'm in a comfortable place, but I think I can do more. So I'm just, uh, I'm, beginning, uh, I'm beginning to investigate what the options are for me while I still have the opportunity to make a few more jumps, I think, before, uh, before it gets very difficult. So, um, what was your word? I think my, my, my word is similar thoughtful. To you. thoughtful. I think I think I'm there. You think you're thoughtful? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, That's my wife, what she thinks. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Very good. Very good. Uh, good morning. My name is David. Um, I have work. I do public policy work, uh, public affairs, uh, consulting, etc. Um, I've worked in the high tech field for over 19 years in high tech public policy. I uh, recently left my job at a company um, this past winter after 12 years to, I was just tired of it. <laughs> I was just mm -hmm. like, I'm tired of it. And I'm sort of in a stage of just looking for my next stage. And I guess the word I would look for is probably exploring. Explore. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Good. My name is Akli Lutadessa. I'm uh, from the nonprofit, uh, with nonprofit management experience, especially in the field of uh, prisoner uh, rehabilitation. So I have been to many prisons and worked with prisoners. I've been uh, director of international services, uh, but my job came to an end because the program was closed. And I feel uh, now I am stuck, uh, and I don't know how I should change a bit of directions. Uh, I'm preparing to take the project management certification nice. program and uh, probably adjust that way. I'm looking for international development organizations. Great. Focus on that. Yeah, 
so your current state of being is stuck. Stuck. Or stuck. Good. Yes. Okay. Good. Eric. Uh, I'm Eric Rudin. I'm the current, uh, for lack of anyone better, executive director of 40 plus. <laughs> And I am a reformed corporate finance executive, and I think my current state is um, evolutionary. Nice. Cool. Uh, I'm Jim. I retired from the Defense Department two years ago after a 39 year career. Uh, went into business with my wife in the financial services area. Um, it's not really hitting my my intellectual needs as far as uh, you know, where I spent my time as an engineer and in computer science and policy making all that. So it's my first time to one of these meetings, so I'm curious. Thanks. I'm Stephanie. Uh, I have a background in education, training, meeting, planning. I worked with Ken um, several years ago. So um, I left my most recent full-time job to do the stay-at-home thing with my daughter, and I'm looking for that sense of purpose at this point. Um, and my state of being is tired in the global <laughs> sense. Every aspect you could possibly come up with, I am tired. I'm tired. Physically, mentally, emotionally, tired. tired. Yeah. Right. Good. Yeah. So I'm Ken Schaffman, I'm a volunteer here at 40 Plus and on the board. I've led associations for the better part of my career over 25 years. Uh, I'm passionate about helping people, but my current state of being or state of mind is uncertain. And our cameraman, you're here. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Jim Chamberlain, I'm a long time volunteer here at 40 Plus. And my, uh, well, my field is uh, nonprofit uh, health education. And my current state is uh, 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 funny. You're in the funny <laughs> state? <laughs> All right. Awesome. Well, I'll take funny. I'm Colin. I'm hoping to facilitate a conversation, a bit of exploration, and I am eager to see what evolves over the next uh, about hour or so as we're together. So um, let's dive in, shall we? So what is leadership? I want you to just tune into what pops into your head when I say leadership. And what does that mean to you? Just notice that. When you feel like you've got something, toss it out of the room for us to hear. Yeah. The ability to inspire people and put them on a course of collective success. Nice. Okay. Someone else? What is leadership? Yeah. Ability to create uh, value or direction. Vision. Value, vision, direction. Yeah. The ability to unite people in a common purpose. Mm, uniting people in a common purpose. Nice. What pops up for you? Uh, makes me think of a story I had in the post this weekend about John Kelly. Now, leaders eat last. Leaders eat last. Okay. Good. Others. What does leadership mean? Patty, what pops up for you? I think mean, setting aside your own individual you know, drivers and looking at what's best for the whole team. Thanks. David? Yeah, it's the ability to unite, um, give direction and guidance, and take in feedback from the team to lead to a common goal. Feedback component there. Josh, what pops in here? Oh, a lot of what already came before, because it was <laughs> it's hard to build on that. Uh, um, I guess um, it would be the ability to actually empower people to to reach their potential, even in spite of their their own um, whatever it is. Yeah, their 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 their, their, their own. Um, 
inability to see their, 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 their abilities. I love what you just brought into the room, and then I'll come over here, um, which is exactly why I asked you to notice your current state of being, because you can't change what you can't see, and you can't change what you can't name. And so I love that kind of helping people see what they're not seeing so that they can use it more purposefully and differently as a leader. Yeah, go for it. Um, I'm thinking <coughs> someone has vision with a goal and wants to bring together those who have empathy for his um, audience. For those he leads or she. Yeah, nice. So I can ask any room full of people that question, and I will obviously get variations of answers. There's a textbook definition. I don't care about what the textbook says. What I care about is where does the variation come from? Why do you each give a slightly different answer when I ask the same question? What's that about? Because we all have different experiences with leadership, yeah. whether we're in that seat or being directed by someone. Yeah. So leadership then is personal. I think it's in the, I think yeah, there are individual aspects of it. Um, but I think there are certain traits that have to be in common. I mean, whether it be the common goal of the group you're working with. I mean, how, I, I use the word inspire, but how somebody inspires is going to be very different from the first. Right. But I think there's some basic things that you have to be able to do as a leader. Well, is it fair to say that how someone leads these 18 people in this room. Ileana as a leader is going to be different from Josh as a leader is going to be different from Laura as a leader. Yeah, has to be, right? Because we are different people. What I want to help you tune into today is that personal aspect. What's my unique belief system, way of being, how I look at the world, what it means to me, and for the sake of what am I willing to lead? So how many of you think of yourself as a leader? Good. May I? Sure. I didn't see a hand go up. No. Say, say more. Are you willing to say something about that? Um, I guess I've been put in put positions of leadership, but I would prefer to be a follower. Mm -hmm. And following isn't leadership. Good followership, right? And do you have, may I ask a few questions? Sure. Do you have, have a significant other? No. Kids? No. Friends? No. You have no friends. <laughs> <laughs> Colleagues you work with. Absolutely. Parents. Yes. Right? And so are you in a position where you've ever influenced someone? Yes. And if nothing else, are you responsible for leading yourself? Better be. Yeah. <laughs> Leadership is not a title on a business card. As a matter of fact, you rarely see that. Leadership, I believe, is an opportunity we each have every day to live into our own sense of what's important to me, who am I, what am I trying to do in the world, what do I value, and leading from that place. So leadership to me is something you be as much as it is anything you do. And so I invite you, for those of you who didn't raise your hand, to actually now raise your hand and say, I'm a leader. So everybody, raise your hand, I am a leader. Because if you are not, you are abdicating your life to somebody or something else. And nobody has time for it. That's the recipe for staying stuck, is to give up that sense of, I'm in the captain's chair. If nothing else of my own life and the choices I am making, I am, I'm at the wheel. I'm in charge. And the more you live from that space, and live from that authentic thing that is only you, because it can't be Jim, because it's you. The more power you have, the more choice you have, the more influence you have. And so I want to start to begin, for many of you, a journey that might be the first time you've ever thought about this. Fantastic, welcome. Welcome to being the captain of your leadership. Cool. All right. How hard is it to be the captain of this ship? What does it take? Skill, training. Skill, training, yeah. 
<laughs> huh? Yeah, you might, you might need a couple other people. It's going to be tough to do that alone. Good vision. Some vision. Good hearing. Yeah, good hearing. Yeah. So there's some stuff. It takes some stuff to be the captain of this ship. Calm seas, beautiful day, great winds. How hard is it to be the captain once you have all those skills in this yeah. I've got the skills, I know what I'm doing, it's a gorgeous day. What about here? What's different? If you know what you're doing, it's easy. If you know what you're doing, what's different here? The challenge, the environment, the environment, the unknowns. We can't control everything. You can't. Control is an illusion. Let's just throw the, that you know, concept out the window. Yeah, even in the previous boat, you can't control everything. Here, you have to really be in the dance. You have to lean into your sense of vision and purpose. And what is this about? What does it look like is going on here? Trying to make it go faster. Trying to make it go faster, trying to win. The stakes are different here, right? Here, it's we're out to have a lovely day on the water. Here, it looks like a competition. Some sort of regatta. I want to be the best, the fastest, the winningest, right? What about the, what's it like to be the captain of this ship? Never die. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. We've all been in some tough moments in, in our lives at work, yes? I've never been in this one. I've never been in what I would call a literal, you know, do or die situation responsible for a large number of people, and yet there are people who do this. What does that take? Courage. Courage. Knowledge. Knowledge. A lot of leadership. A lot of leadership. Action. Action. Yeah, you get right. And not the kind of action that looks like me running around screaming on the deck of the ship, oh my god, we're all gonna die! <laughs> not helpful in this moment, right? Yeah. Risk mitigation, risk it, planning. Risk planning, risk I. How prepared do I need to be for this? Yeah. Right? I need to have thought, if I'm going to be the captain of a ship, I need to know that this moment could happen. And I need to think about how am I going to show up? I need to practice for that. I need to hone that ability. Living your life is no different. Because moments like this happen in life, yes? the moment, the call to action, the opportunity, the whatever, and if we haven't prepared, if we haven't thought about it, if we haven't honed and crafted who we are as people, as leaders, we are less likely to be the calm, focused, centered person who can navigate this ship to safety. We're more likely to be, oh. So that's why this matters. It matters to spend time thinking about it because as leaders, as people, as we move through the world, we leave stuff behind us. Yes? Susan Scott describes this as your emotional wake. And what that basically says is every time you and I interact, you're going to remember something. And that's either going to be an aftermath, ooh, that doesn't sound good, an aftertaste, not sure, or an afterglow. As we move through the world as people, every interaction we have is going to lead to that impact. The less intentional we are about it, what happens? The less we move through the world with intention, what happens? Go adrift. Adrift. What else? Lose your focus. Lose focus. Which one of these? Huh? Yeah. 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 We tend to be leaving bodies in our wake, right? And we've all, how many of us have worked for that leader? Or been in the presence of that leader? Oh, yeah, got a lot of shit done. But left a lot of really pissed off, angry people in his, his or her wake. And so the how of leadership matters, and the how comes from our intention. And if we are not conscious about our intention and who we want to be, we are less likely to live into that. Fair? Yeah. For those of you who are more maybe the finance guy in the back of the room, Stephen Covey calls this the emotional bank account. What he basically says is, Liliana, you and I have a relationship now, yes? Yes, right? We only have that relationship because we are in conversation together. 
We wouldn't have a relationship otherwise. Our relationship started with a zero balance. I don't know her, she doesn't know me. Every interaction from there on out is either a deposit, a withdrawal, or a neutral, oops, into the emotional bank account. That's how much this matters about how we move through the world. And when it comes to those of us who are in transition, it matters even more in some ways. Because people are trying to tune into who are you as a person? Where are you as a person? What matters to you? What do you believe in? Which is why when Ken asked me for an introduction, I said the first thing I want you to tell people is what I believe. Anybody remember what he said? Give or take. Lives worth living, leaders worth following, and organizations worth being a part of that hopefully create communities worth living in. I encourage you, and I hope that this will begin the process of you finding that for you. I want you to go out into the world after today, not with an elevator speech to tell potential employers, but with a sense of who am I and what do I believe in, and why you should, that matters to you. That's how you're going to differentiate yourself from the nine million other people who haven't thought about this. Because if I believe what you believe, we're gonna stay in conversation. And if I don't believe what you believe, we probably shouldn't work. If it's too wildly divergent. So you want to get my attention? Tell me what to believe, not who you are. So we're going to dive into that a little bit. We're going to prime those pumps and hopefully give you enough to get started about thinking about that. So how do we do this? We all know language matters, right? Sticks and stones may break my bones. Yeah, bullshit. <laughs> how many of you have been hurt by words? Right? It's universal, and yet we teach our children, and we teach each other, words don't matter. Yes, they do, because words create worlds. Thoughts become things. We create our intention, we create our leadership. One major pathway is through the language that we choose. So we're gonna explore that a little bit by recognizing first that what I declare, what I intend, what I speak becomes my reality. Well, how does that work? All right. Most important question of the day. Anybody know what abracadabra stands for? What pops in your head when you see that? Magic. Magic. Go a little deeper. What else pops in your head? Black magic. Black magic. All right. I see you. What, what is this? Is this the guy with... <laughs> it's like the magician. Halfway raising my hand. Yeah. It, it has actually something... It's group words actually something to do with making um, ideas or something um, visible yes. Yes. Or, or creative. So yes. that word is um, a creative word. It is ancient Aramaic for I create as I speak. Hmm. That's really what it means. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Cool. That's really what I mean, that There are different, but many etymologists trace it back to the ancient Aramaic of mm -hmm. I create as I speak. And you just experienced it. I said abracadabra, you all had an image that popped in your head. And you immediately said magic. Words create worlds. We use language to create our realities. Well, how does that, why does that matter? Big, big important question. Why do you think I wear my shirt on top? Because it's cool to do it now. Because it's cool, <laughs> right? Is this casual, little shirt on top to action? Sure. What else? It's comfortable. Go a little bit further with that. Bringing an idea of accessibility. Okay, so openness, accessibility, all good ideas. No, it's because I'm fat, ladies and gentlemen. It's the only way it's comfortable. I've got about 40 pounds that I'm too much. I am fat. What happened the first time I said that word to me? I am fat. I created a neural pathway in my brain that made that my reality. Now what happens when you walk a neural pathway at the same time? Imagine you get up in the morning. For the 70 years, 80 years, you live in the same house and you get up in the morning and what's the first thing we do? Right, so we get up, we walk out of bed, we go to the bathroom. 
And as we get older, we might do that two or three times a night, right? We're going, and what happens to the carpet? It's away. Right, and eventually we're through the carpet and we're into the hardwood, and eventually we're into the hardwood and down even deeper, right? Until we can't not walk that pathway. The same thing is happening in our brains. That what we say, I am, is what becomes. So when I say I'm fat, I am reinforcing my fatness, and my body goes, oh, well, okay then. And what am I not likely to do then? Lose weight. Lose weight. What else? Eat well. Eat well. What else? Do sports. Do sports. Exercise. Go to the gym. My body goes, oh, well, if you're fat, sure, then we'll do all the things that reinforce that. So whatever thought patterns you have about yourself currently are either serving you or not. And when it comes to your leadership, when it comes to your presence, when it comes to how you're moving through the world, we get to use this powerful tool in a really creative, generative way. And it's called language. And it's through making commitments of I will. Doug Silsby is a fantastic leadership coach. And he says, making a commitment is the fundamental act of leadership. And so what I'm curious about is what commitments you want to make to yourself, to your life, to how you lead. And I will make sure that you all get copies of this presentation. Ken has made sure. So take a picture, write things down. You're welcome to, and you don't have to. Any thoughts or reflections so far on kind of what we've talked about? What's coming up for you? Yeah. Well, as, as somebody who's worked with words for a long time, I'm really impressed by your verbal, your verbalizing and how words are power and how they create reality. Because um, people create narratives about what's true. And I've been thinking a bit about cognitive distortion, if you're familiar with the work of David Burns and others, and how people tell themselves things about reality. Yeah. In via cognitive distortion. It's worth looking up the list if yeah. you haven't done that. Um, yeah. Beautiful. And it's the same with the media, and it's the same with political power. Again, I spent 20 years listening to politicians and saw how people right. affected, how people They are masters power. at this. Yeah. Masters. And what is the impact that has on our individual lives? Let's mm -hmm. use some of the language I heard many of you speak today. I am in transition. Keep speaking that, and that's exactly where you will be forever. Now, that may be OK with you. You may be in a constant state of transition. That may be exactly where you want to be. For those of you, I had a friend who um, was searching for She was in knowledge management, and that's the kind of thing that gets cut. When budgets get tight, she's like, I'm like top of the list, right? We can do without our knowledge, which seems <laughs> really weird. Um, so she calls me as her third time through this rodeo of getting cut. She's like really down. You know, she said, I just want a job. I said, yes, you do. She's like, no, I mean, I really want a job. I want a job. I just want a job. I said, yes, you do. She's like, you're not hearing me. I said, you're not hearing you. You're creating the want of a job instead of the having of a job. She kind of jumped back and said, Err? So when you say I want a job, you're in the want. Change your language, change your life. So I'm going to challenge you to do an experiment. Said, okay. So for two weeks, three weeks, a month, whatever it takes, I want you to catch every time you say I want and change it to I have and see what happens. She called me two weeks later. She said, I have a job. I said, I know you do. She said, no, I actually have a job. I said, I know you do. She's like, what do you mean, how do you? I was like, because you changed your language to change your life. I said, when do you start? She said, Monday. I said, congratulations. I said, what shifted? She said, I did. I shifted how I showed up. I shifted my energy. I shifted what I was willing to do. Because if I had a job, my body went, well, you better do some stuff then. You better get into action. You better move instead of sitting at home wanting. So what I'm curious about is what you want to declare about your purpose, your meaning, for the sake of what you want to live and work. 
Because who doesn't want a sense of purpose? As a matter of fact, research has shown us that having this sense of purpose, this kind of articulated, clear vision that you articulated that leaders need to have of your own life actually lets you be less stressed, live longer, and healthier, and need less medicine as you age. Anybody want to sign up for that? Right? Yeah. Well, this takes time to articulate. It takes time to craft. And so the first tool of the trade as a leader, as a captain of your ship, you have a way to steer. It's called the captain's wheel, right? You have to have a guidance system. You have to have something you can hold on to that will actually move your own sense of leadership and who you are as a person. You have a way to do that. I believe that the captain's wheel is a powerful one sentence declaration of what you believe in and who you exist to be. I believe in lives worth living, leaders worth following, and organizations worth being a part of that create communities worth living. And I bring my unique blend of compassionate challenge to helping people find their way forward. That's mine. I wake up every day knowing that that's what I exist to do. And I will tell you that as a new entrepreneur about four years ago, I used to lead with all but what I could do. Oh, yeah, I can coach you. I can run a leadership development program. I can do that. And people are like, yeah, yeah, you know, you know, yeah, it's great. Da, 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 da. When I started leading with this, people would call me, like Stephanie would call me, I hear you're a great coach. Well, let me tell you what I believe in. I make four times as much now as I did when I sold the other way. Words create worlds. What I believe in matters. So, Let's begin to dive into what yours is. As a leader, I exist to embody compassionate challenge in helping people find their way forward. As a leader, I. What's yours? As a leader, I stand for, embody, I'm a commitment to exist to. It doesn't matter if you can choose that language. I'm curious about what comes after those three dots. And so I have some thought questions for you. And they are on your handout. And I'm going to invite you, right here in this workshop, to take five minutes and begin to explore. Something may pop up, but this is not a time to craft and hone that one sentence. This is a time to begin exploring what might be there by tuning into these questions. And so I'm going to invite you, I'm going to give you about five minutes to just start that journey, and I'm going to play some cover music while you do that. <laughs> and if you have any questions, I'm here. Do you have any more handouts? Yes. Thank you.
is the space at the bottom of that first page to take a stab at a draft of what might be your leadership declaration. No hurry, it's there for you whenever you're ready. you are be good enough for now. I love that concept. It's good enough for now. Sometimes we just need to declare something that's good enough. <laughs> so I'm curious, what was that like? Not what did you come up with, but what was it like to go a little bit inside and start to look at these questions? Yeah. Um, actually, it's very empowering to really see all that I have to share and what I uniquely can do for, for others. Beautiful. So a sense of like, oh, I didn't know all that was in there. Look at it. There it is. Oh, I forgot. You forgot. Yeah. yeah. And there it is, staring at you. Right. Nice. Yeah. It's interesting because as a strategic planner, I work with organizations to craft their mission and vision and strategic plan, and I never actually thought about the exact same. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> You know, what is my vision as how, you know, so it's sort of creating that partnership to create that vision. Yeah. Nice. Beautiful. Yeah. I found this incredibly difficult. Yeah. Like almost emotionally so. Mm. Mm. Maybe I, I think I think this gets to the, to the core of what I'm trying to find for myself. Um, so, uh, I'm, I'm actually very grateful for this because it gives a set of questions that I think I need to answer. Um, At least to start exploring. Yeah. 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 Good. I'm yeah. glad it's emotional. That means it matters. Yeah, that does. So congratulations. Welcome. Yeah, Steph. You made me realize who I am, who my authentic self is. You know, putting it above, well, it's about the money or, you know, it's about the purpose. Part of that purpose is who I am as a person. And I don't think we ask ourselves that question. Those, these questions are often enough. Or, or ever. Yeah. Yeah, I was doing a workshop like this in a room full of about 150, almost 200 people in Milwaukee. There was a woman on the very back row. And during this part, I could just tell she was having a moment. And she was like, much like you, together, put together. Like, she's got it all going on, you know. She was. So I, I said, may I ask you, in front of 150 of our closest friends, may I ask you, what's going on for you? And she said, I am 64 and a half years old. I was like, well, hey, good for you. <laughs> we'll never know. Um, she said, and I've never thought about these things. And I'm looking back on my life going, what if I missed? What I, and I'm just having this big moment of regret. I said, may I ask a personal question? She said, sure. I said, how's your help? She said, oh, it's great. I said, so you said you're retired, yes? She said, yeah, about six months. I said, okay, and you're not dying. She said, no. And she's like, no, no, I'm not. I'm not dying. I said, okay, so what do you want to do? She's like, I want to answer these questions. <laughs> I said, awesome. Do you want to, she's like, is it okay if I leave and just go answer? I was like, go, yes, it is absolutely. She comes back about a half an hour later and everyone's like, so? And she's like, I'm retiring, I'm not dying. <laughs> I still have time. Yes, now is always the perfect time to start. From wherever we are, now is always the perfect time to start. So you've started. What I'm going to invite you to do very quickly 
is to pair up with someone and to have a very brief conversation about what came up for you. There is nothing to fix in this conversation. There is nothing to critique. There is no, no advice to give. This is just to serve as witness to whatever Laura's stuff was and to listen for what feels really authentic as someone is sharing their story. Just listen for what feels really authentic so you can mirror that back to them. Oh, you know, Patty, when you said that, your eyes lit up and I really noticed this energy. That's what you want to be listening for. And whatever they share is okay. However far they got is okay. All right? So this is how we pair up. You stand up. And you grab someone's hand. And when everybody has someone's hand, we know everybody's paired up. So keep holding hands, because that's the only way we can tell. Everyone here, good. So I'm going to give you about three minutes per person to share. I will call time in the middle to tell you to switch. Try to focus on one person at a time. So if I can, if you can raise your hand and focus up here. Raise your hand and focus up here. I'm going to invite everyone to raise their hand. So I want to make sure everyone's clear about what we're doing, because I think in the midst of everything, I want to make sure. So Laura is going to talk for three minutes with Gina. She's just going to share. And then Gina is going to say, here's what I heard. Here's what felt really up. And you put your hand down. Here's what felt really I'm very good at following instructions. Yes, well done. Large corporation. Yes, yeah, right, exactly. Then I will call time, and, uh, and so that you'll know it's time to, to move into switching with the other person. Okay. So this is Laura sharing with uh, with Gina. Gina reflects, "Wow, this I, this felt really work. This felt uncertain. I'm curious about this. No fixing. No editing. No judgment. Listening for authenticity. And then I will call. Okay. Go. Yes. The feedback is what? The feedback is active listening? Yeah. When you're listening for his magic, 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 you're listening for his magic. I'm reflecting on it. I'm not saying you said to me, blah, blah, blah. I'm saying this is the impact. This is the impact. This is the impact. So basically,
Oh, yes. 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 Oh,
because eventually it's like, wait, I have to raise my hand when I go with the whole That's right. So, we're back here. Come on. <laughs> so you're like, ah! You may continue these conversations. Thank your partner. And I'm curious if anyone wants to brag on something that they heard their partner say that felt really magical. Not about you, but something about them. Yeah. Well, um, Kate started off before she talked about being gay. She started off, she was a kinder world. Mm. And I was kind of struck by that because I also want a kind of world that would come out. <coughs> Yeah, so that felt really authentic, really real. There's something magical there for you. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. I think because it's not necessary to have a kind world. We don't have to. Right. Yeah. Nice. Beautiful. Let's get Kate around with applause for us, guys. Who else? Yeah. yeah. Elizabeth had a, a passion and authenticity about where she wants to go. I mean, she has a vision of where she sort of sees things. There's a big disconnect with people when they set their goals and where they really want to go. And she has a passion around how to sort of bring that together. And it's very refreshing to see. Beautiful. Nice. Yeah. Let's give that a round. Excellent. One more. Yeah, Jim. Um, Juliana is a listener. <coughs> I think. She didn't use that word, but she used all the words that go around that. You know, to people because she's client-oriented, and you can't serve a client in something like design or whatever it is without being a listener and then turning around and communicating back either you know, what you design or, or some other way. Because the, the end is you want to please that client, but I think she probably puts that in the rest of her life as well. <coughs> There's a really beautiful thing about what he just said about I listen to show you and design what you said to me. Yeah, that's cool. Let's get that around. Because if I need a designer, and and you say, you know, show me your work, da 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 da. But who are you as a designer? And she said something like, "I listen deeply, so I can show you who you are through the designs I create." Oh, that's way different than. Let me show you some slides. Right? There's magic. Words create worlds. <coughs> so good. Give yourselves a round of applause. I believe everybody should get applause once a day. It feels good. I need an app and applause that Colin, you got out of bed this morning. Well done. <laughs> good start. Whew. So you have now turned in, and I, I encourage you to continue this journey. Let it evolve. Let it turn over time. Continue to work it. I noticed some of you weren't writing, you were thinking. That's okay, I encourage you to write. I noticed some of you were on your phone typing. I encourage you to go back and do this again and write. Writing access is a different part of our brain and our body in a way that, those, that just sitting and thinking and typing don't. Um, John, I think uh, Josh had a pretty like, woo, because here's stuff. This is me, this is real, this is important, this matters. And we can often only find that out through the process of writing. Can I just add to that? Yeah, go. My son just started business school working on his master's. And they won't let you bring computers, iPads, or anything in the room. You have to take, if you want to do anything, you take notes. You take notes. You, know, you don't <laughs> read your, what they're, what they're case studies, you don't read anything. Uh, off the computer in class. Yep. In fact, I don't, well, yes. Because so that's not how you learn. But you take notes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. If you talk to, there's a ton of research out there, and so we'll just kind of put a fine point on this. Um, court reporters. <coughs> you talk to a court reporter, and like, so what happened? I don't know. A bunch of stuff was said. Mm -hmm. All they're doing is transcribing, <coughs> they're not processing the information. And so when we're typing, when we're doing that, <coughs> We're getting a bunch of stuff into our computer, but we're not getting any of it in the house. And so, good for them. Good for them for going old school. Because it works. How you feeling? Yeah? The beginning of a journey? Nice. I want to give you a sense of a couple of other things that you can do that we won't spend a lot of time on here. 
but I want to kind of walk you through some next steps in the journey that you might find easier or different. So one is the second tool of the journey, which I call your compass. <coughs> and the compass is, so now that I have a sense of the leader that I am, and Ileana, I will play with yours if I may, right? And so she leads from this place and she partners with clients from this place of deep listening to reflect what I hear you say about you through my design. Well, what are the pathways in any given moment that she can walk? What are the characteristics, the ways of being, the stuff I'm going to do to draw on that? And that's where I think the compass comes in. It helps you figure out where am I going to steer, when I'm lost, when I'm in a tough moment, what am I going to draw up Whoa, to break the chair? To make sure that my um, leadership shows up in the way that I want. So think of these as pathways to manifest your leadership. So I'm going to share with you what mine are. So if my leadership declaration is all around this creating communities and people and leaders worth being a part of, and I bring my compassion and challenge to help people find their way forward, in any given moment, I need to be clear. And I learned this really the hard way. I did employee relations for a long, long time. Anybody familiar with what employee relations does? They deal with all the really hard stuff in an organization potential violence, domestic violence, discrimination, like all of that really hard stuff. And people would come into my office and they would share something with me and I would take it on as if it was my problem. So Laura would bring me her stuff and Kate would bring me his and Eric would bring me his and blah, 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 blah. And I thought it was my job to fix all to take all of that and fix it. And at some point somebody said, do you really know what help looks like for any one of those people? I had a step back moment, as I call it, and went, what do you mean? Well, I just noticed you're taking everyone's problems instead of getting clear about what's being asked of you. Oh, well, wouldn't that be neat if I added that in? So clear is now a pathway for me. If I want to bring my compassionate challenge to any given person, am I clear about what would be helpful? And so I've learned to ask, what are you hoping I will do with this? What are you looking for from me? How are you hoping I can be of help? Those are ways that I've learned as pathways to walk to get clear about what Josh needs in terms of my compassionate challenge versus what Patty needs. So that's one of my pathways. The second one is collaborative. So when I'm in a really tough moment, something's not going well, or just as a way of being that I want to enhance, I want to co together, labor, work, to be in the state of, to be in the state of working together with someone. Partnership versus conflict. So when I'm finding myself in this, if I can remember to be collaborative, I can allow that person's point of view to exist. I don't have to be right anymore. So that's another pathway that if I can remember in the moment and walk, what would collaboration do to this moment to help me show up the way I want to show up? So that's my south. My west is calm. Now, I'm a pretty high energy person. Generally, I have two speeds, on off. <laughs> you put more people in a room, the more energy I get. Like, I live for this, right? And so I recognized that this was something I needed to cultivate. That my tendency to move into action and to feed off the energy of other people was not always serving me. And so I cultivated a stillness practice. I learned how to meditate. I learned how to be in quiet. I learned how to sit. I learned how to breathe. So that I could get to the space where I could live in conscious choice to be compassionate. And my last one is compassion itself. I sometimes can be more challenging than compassionate. Anybody know what compassion really is about? The word? Yeah. Um, the word of the word is from to suffer with. Yes. Compassion literally is to suffer with. So that's just to be in the presence of whatever their most human stuff is and to let that be okay and to just be witness to that. And so in any given tough moment in life, if I can remember to go my compassion, I'm 
much more likely to show up as a leader in their personal life. For some people, these are easier to find. What are the ways of being that I call on? What are the things I can remember to do? And so I encourage you to spend some time thinking about what are my pathways? What can I walk in the moment? Time is time. I'm in that interview. And I'm noticing that I'm getting all, Ooh, what can I go to? What pathway can I walk to show up the way I want to show up? I'm in a tough spot with my child, with my significant other, with my whoever. And I'm finding my, Ooh, showing up. What pathways work for you to show up as the leader that you are? And so you have a worksheet that can with some questions to help you identify those. So that's something you can do after our experience today. Questions, comments about like that? Alright. I want to introduce you to the third tool before we wrap this up. And the third tool has to do final C of leadership, I believe, is the courage to actually do it. The courage to step in, the courage to recognize that I own my life, that I am responsible for how I show up in the world, that I have an opportunity to deeply personalize what that means for me and live from that place. And that takes real courage. Big courage. So what is courage? Where does it come from? Where does it live? When you're feeling courageous, how do you know? Just do. How? Is it like pornography? I know it when I see it. Kind of thing? <laughs> 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 because you um, are more likely to be able to move forward without any inhibitions at all. In the face of. Whatever it is. Whatever it is. You might do something you wouldn't otherwise do. You might do something you wouldn't otherwise do. You cannot be courageous without fear. Otherwise, it's not courage. How many of you are Game of Thrones fans? Anybody watch Game of Thrones? <laughs> Winter is here. <laughs> yes. So each of these houses, you know, have their sigils of what, you know, they're, they're what they stand for. The flayed man, like that's their sense of purpose, right? Well, they also have a bunch of mercenaries that I can hire to go kill a bunch of people on the battlefield, right? Is that courage? No. Because courage doesn't live in the pocketbook. I can buy your bravery. I can give you enough money, and most of you would probably say at a certain point, yeah, I'll go do that, <laughs> right? Whatever that, that is. I can't buy your courage because it lives somewhere different. Where does it live? Where does it live inside of us? There's a great big hint up here. Right? The word courage literally comes from the French for heart, which means it ain't about this. It's I gotta care about something. It has to matter to me. And so to be a leader, I believe, is to put bravery and purpose together. Courage is, yes. In fact, um, one of the, one of what they say, the French say when they're wishing you good luck because they say bon courage. Yes. Which is good, good luck means yeah. good courage. Yeah. 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 yeah for me, I'm French. Mm -hmm. It's uh, an awful expression because bon courage is like uh, bon courage. You know? <laughs> you were, good luck with not, that. It's not in a way. <laughs> oh, it's it's not not a, no, it's bon courage. Really? You were, Yes. Wow. It's yes. uh it's not a meaning uh, it's not a positive um uh, uplifting yeah, yeah it's uh, you will suffer no <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I see. Uh, it's chance. very negative. <laughs> yeah. so what you say, bon I didn't realize No, that. you don't say bon chance, you, you say, say bon courage. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, it's like good luck yeah. It's you, you know, you're probably not going to do it, but you know, if you're a trooper for making the effort, type of thing. Or you know? it's gonna hurt. <laughs> yeah. Right? That's what I hear is this is gonna be yeah, tough, just, so just gird just your loins. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I didn't realize that. It's not in the good uh, way like you you, you mentioned. I didn't realize yeah. And that's exactly what we have to draw on in these tough oh. moments. We have to draw on something deeper that we care about 
to make it come to life. It has to matter to us for the sake of what am I living this life? What do I believe in? So our courage has to come from this place. Well, how do you begin? What do we think we know about our heart? What do you know about the heart? Physiologically, what do you know about the heart? It's an organ. It's an organ. What does it do? Blood. 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 Yep. Okay. What does it need to do that? Oxygen. Oxygen. Guess what it doesn't need? Stress. <laughs> well, it actually does need actually good you know exercise and stress and that is good for the heart yes it doesn't need the brain the heart actually anybody seen the ultrasound from their baby or somebody's baby what's the first thing that forms the heart not the brain and the heart does not need the brain to pump blood the heart comes first and has its own electrical system it has its own energy we can tap into that. That is of use to us, right? Now, there's some who would argue, oh, it's actually the brain and the heart working. Well, that's great, but we spend enough time up here. I think we need to dig a little deeper and spend some time down here. And so here's, how do we talk about our heart? What's the language? What is our colloquialisms about the heart that we use? Love. Huh? Love. Love, right. Whenever we talk about love, we talk about the heart. Yes. What else? What phrases come to mind? About the, heart. The, heart. About the heart of the matter, not the brain of the matter. It's the heart of the matter. Yeah. We talk about someone being open-hearted. We talk about somebody having um, a large heart. Yeah. In sense of being generous and warm. Yeah. Exactly. What else? Talk about the heart versus the head. Yes. And what is it about the heart we talk about? Feelings. 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 Sincerity. 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 Yeah. We don't talk about oh. He broke my brain. <laughs> my brain's broken. No, I'm heartbroken. I'm from the South. In the South, we bless your heart. And much like bon courage in French, it's not good when we bless your heart from the South. Wow, he's dumb as a box of rocks, bless his heart, right? <laughs> it's not good, but we bless your heart. We don't bless your head. I've heard it's a nice way to say after you. But it is, it was a very southern way, right? Exactly. Oh, bless your heart. <laughs> I mean, you can hear the idiot, right? I mean, yeah. Just keep living there, bless your heart. Yeah. That's another one in the south. How cute are you? Yeah. To believe that crazy woman. <laughs> oh, yeah. So the, 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 colloquially, our hearts live in how we use our language, right? I didn't have the heart for it. My heart wasn't in it. And that is an easy space for those of us who are working to find that next thing to be women in. <sighs> right? When we don't have the heart for it anymore, we tend to look and sound and feel like this. So it's something that sort of defies logic. It goes, it's, it's not necessarily logical. No, because it doesn't live here. Right. It's here. Yeah. We experience it physiologically in this energetic place from here. And our body is made. We actually are very vulnerable in terms of standing upright as humans. That took a lot for us to do, evolutionarily speaking, because all this stuff is really important, and now people can get at it. It's also really powerful. Because what does it look or sound and feel like when someone is leading with their heart? How do you know? relations to others. Yeah. Yeah. What There's else? an energy to it. There's a passion to it. It's not... It's authentic. Yeah. Yes, there's a passion. There's an energy. How do their bodies tend to show up? Like this? Yeah, they stand up right. Right. Confident. They have to. Because their heart's here. If your heart is present, now I don't want your brains to go away. I want you to still use your brains, but I want you to bring your heart with it. Because when both are in alignment and working for you, this is what happens. <laughs> and people now know, huh? Oh, I see you. Oh, that's cool. Oh, you matter. Oh, I intrigue you. You are out in the world right now building a relationship. We're doing it all the time. You all are doing it for a specific purpose right now. 